something that I really like to talk about because I find it very interesting. And so, because I actually didn't really fully understand this until very recently. Um, you know, if you've ever looked outside of your house, uh, up on if you have a power pole, which I do, of course, um, because I live in the boonies, but yeah, so you have this power pole, and up on this power pole, there's a transformer, okay? And so you see these wires coming in, and then coming out of that transformer, there's two wires, but really one main wire that goes in, and then it goes into your, into your meter box. And then there's, you know, there's a, a neutral wire down at the bottom, but it doesn't, you know, it, it's not as high. You know, it's not the one that it seems to be real worried about. Uh, but you have this one, you have this, you have this one wire that goes in, and then I'm, did I say that right? No, then you have two coming out. You have two coming out, and then a neutral going in. But generally speaking, the one going into your transformer, which is what I was trying to say, is just one main wire and then a ground. Well, they take that one wire, and then they have two wires coming out of that transformer. And when you, when you're, you know, looking at different appliances on your house, you'll have some appliances that are 120 volts, and you'll have some appliances that are 240 volts. For example. Uh, your air conditioner is 240 volts generally. Um, your, your plugs in your house are going to be 120 volts. Uh, your uh, dryer is going to be 240 volts. Your oven is going to be 240 volts. Well, how do you produce this 240 volts when coming into the transformer before it goes into your house, you only have one wire? Well, first of all, understand that a transformer is an interesting device in that there is no connection between the primary and secondary of the transformer. So you have this high voltage power coming in to the transformer, and then you have coming out to your house a usable voltage 120 or 240 volts so how does it go from being this high voltage to a lower voltage before it enters your house well what it actually does is, is it uses magnetism so you have these wraps of wire on one side that will have a greater number of wraps on the higher voltage side and then a lesser number of wraps on the lower voltage side that goes to your house and the magnetism that's created there's a magnetic field that's created that induces a voltage it creates because magnetism causes there to be a voltage flow or electron flow electromotive force, potential difference, whatever you want to call it. Um, because you have fewer wraps of wire over here, uh, you have lower voltage over here, and it's really that simple. So for example, if I had, let's, you know, for the sake of a, for the sake of a round number, let's say that I had uh, 120 volts coming out and I have 1200 volts going in. Well, all that is is a 10 to one ratio. So that means that there's 10 times as many wraps on this side of wire as there is on this side. You'd think it would have to be more complex than that, but it's not. It's just that 10 times less wraps of wire, so you get um, you get a 10 times reduction in the voltage output. So, so there's that side of it, but then how do you get two different wires? How do you bring one wire in and then you get two different 240 volt wires? And how do you get how do you get I mean two different 120 volt wires? And how do you get 240 volts out of that? When it comes to understanding that whole thing about potential difference, this makes 120 volts and 240 volts make a whole lot more sense. Is that you have the center line, which represents a state of normalcy. And this is what a 120 volt sine wave looks like. In really, this representation is exactly what's created by that big magnet that's churning over at the power plant because over at the power plant you have this you know this big turning magnet that's then inducing this voltage into this wire and it's creating this this sine wave okay so what you're see what the sine wave that's being seen at your outlet is a direct connection to what's occurring at the power plant which i always think is interesting so you have this that's occurring at 60 uh cycles per second so from here to here you have 60 of these per second, which is where we get the term 60 hertz. You, I'm sure you've probably heard that before, 60 hertz. Essentially, the power is going on and off 60 times uh, per second, or making one full cycle 60 times per second. Um, so this is 120 volts. So it goes to peak power and then down to peak power because this is just as much peak power as this is peak power. This is the difference from here to here. Again, it doesn't matter which way. But in a 240 volt circuit, It's exactly opposite. You have an exactly opposite 120 volt, exactly opposing 120 volt circuit. So when you measure from here to here, it's 120 volts. From here to here, it's 120 volts. But from here to here, it's 240 volts because they're peaking and valleying at exactly opposite moments. Now, how does that happen? Because it starts with one wire going into your transformer. Here's how it happens, which I think is fascinating. They take the two, they take they take the two wires that are going into your house and they wrap them in opposite directions around the core. 
So you have one going this way, wrapping around, and then you have another one wrapping around the opposite direction. So as that magnetism is inducing into that, as, as the magnetism is being induced into those wraps of wire going into your house, it's creating one that, uh, set of electrons that are flowing one direction and one set that are flowing in the exact opposite direction within the same transformer. And so then it outputs two separate 140 volt, 120 volt circuits to your house, which is very interesting. So then in your house, you have the, and the reason why they do it is for that reason, that you can have a, a more safe electricity to use for general you know, daily use in your computer or whatever, and then you have a higher voltage, a higher um, But both the wires coming out of the transformer are 120. Two. And independently. Correct. Two independently. independently 120. Correct. And then they get combined in your house in the right area. I, I like to always use water whenever I can, and I like to think of electron flow like water. Um, when I think of electrical potential, for example, I think of your, I think of your outlets as being uh, little spigots with high pressure, and you can turn them on, and by turning them on, you allow the, the electrons to flow. Well, how we turn them on is by plugging the thing in, and now you create a path for it to flow. Because unlike, unlike uh, water, electricity wants to flow from one state to another through a conductor, not just in open air the way water can. You know, I can squirt you with water here, but in the, in, the in the electron world, this air between us is a great barrier. It's, it's opposite, you know. So the, in the electron world, it would be happy to flow through a sheet of metal, a sheet of copper or something, because that would be the, that would be the equivalent of air to it. Um, but but because of that, we don't we don't have a path. So creating a path around this circuit is the same. I'm making a gateway by plugging in my uh, my outlet, my plug to that outlet. So I'm creating I'm creating a path or circuit for those electrons to essentially run. And it's a really simplistic way of looking at it. So when I create a circuit for them to run from here to here. That's a 120 volt circuit. When I'm creating a circuit for them to run from here to here, now I'm creating a 240 volt circuit.